Hello everyone, it is Caroline or Miss B Overseas. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to be doing everyone's favorite tag to do around this time of year, which is the mid-year reading check-in tag. We should all know what this is by now. Hopefully you know what it is, but if you don't, it's just a series of prompts and questions that allow me to check in with my reading and you get to follow along. I check in with all the reading that I've done this year in 2021, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, when I was sitting here trying to fill out the prompts, I have my notebook, I was getting really reflective and I don't know, this is probably a common thing, but I just feel like my feelings and emotions in regards to books this year in particular haven't been quite as visceral or like extreme as they have been in years past. So some of these prompts are not filled in yet. Some of them were really easy for me to fill in. Some of them I still have blank. So we're just going to figure them out together on camera. As far as the questions that I'll be answering, I will of course leave those in the description. I will also leave the original creators of this tag linked in the description below. Uh, this tag has really kind of developed and changed over the years and some creators add in new questions, some creators change up the questions, some creators leave questions out altogether. Uh, I have just kind of done the same thing and I've picked and chosen the ones that I want to do. Starts out of course with the big one which is the best book that I've read so far in 2021 and of course course, it wouldn't be me, it wouldn't be a Miss B Overseas video if I didn't have a caveat. I feel like this year in particular, there's been a big difference between best books and my favorite books. Because when I think favorite books, I really think of favorite more in terms of the reading experience I had while I read the book. And best book more refers to just the overall holistically the book as a whole. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know if I even should include this right now. It's just me rambling. Let's go ahead and get to the best book. This is necessarily my favorite book that I've read in 2021, but this is hands down the best, most brilliant book that I've read so far this year, which is Everything Sad is Untrue by Daniel Nyeri. This is a middle grade and uh, I can already hear your thoughts inside your head of like, oh, I don't really like middle grade. I don't really read middle grade. No. Okay. No, I will not hear that slander about this book on this channel. We are all reading this. We are all picking this up. And as much as I am hyping it to you right now, I wish that I could come up with a good quick description for this book. But the fact of the matter is that I can't because it, it is not written linearly. There are no chapter breaks or any kind of break in the story itself. I think the best way to describe it is to borrow a phrase from the book itself, which is a patchwork of stories about this young middle grade aged boy and uh, his life, his parents' life, his grandparents' life, his ancestors' life, and kind of the folklore and the legends that have been passed down to him, and all of these moments and experiences that have led up to where he is now, which is living in Oklahoma with him and his family as Iranian refugees. A large part of this book, Daniel Nyeri, you can tell drew from his real life experiences, and this is a book that you can just tell when you read it that it is a life's work. It is brilliantly written and crafted. And I don't have many books where I say like, this is a must read or everyone needs to read this. But I think that if you go into it with an open mind, knowing that it's not going to be one linear story, but instead this whole kind of amalgamation, you're going to have your mind blown. And uh, I think everyone should read it. They start off with the big one and then they think that they're doing everyone a favor by narrowing it down because the next one is the best sequel that you've read so far in 2021. So when I saw this prompt, I had like a big sigh of relief because I was like, okay, this narrows down the scope a lot more. I'm gonna have less to choose from. Turns out I don't have any to choose from because I've only read one sequel this year. Even if I had read multiple sequels, I do feel like this would be a contender for the best sequel that I've read. However, this one, this time with the point of the year that I'm in and what I've read, this wins by default. Uh, the best sequel that I've read so far this year is Nixia Uprising by Scott Rankton. This is the third and final in the Nixia triad, which I feel like is a very underhyped YA sci-fi space series. Scott Rankton just did every single thing in this final book. He wrapped every single character arc up flawlessly and uh, this is a particular trilogy where I loved 
each book as much as the next one. Like I can't pick a favorite out of the trilogy and I normally have a really hard time with last books. Like they're never quite satisfying, but I think with this one, Scott Rankin did a fantastic job. Next up is a new release that I want to read, but I haven't gotten to yet. I chose two. I'm sure I could have listed more. But these two in particular have been released semi-recently. Uh, one is Everybody Dies Famous in a Small Town by Bonnie Sue Hitchcock, which is a short story collection. The other one is Long Division by Kia S. A. Lehman. Both of these authors I have read from before and very much enjoyed, so that's why they are anticipated releases. I am in particular looking forward to this one, because originally this was published years and years ago, but it wasn't published the way Layman wanted it to be published and so this is kind of the re-release how Layman actually wanted the story to be told. And following up with that, uh, the next one is my most anticipated release. This one is blank and it makes me kind of sad that this one is blank because uh, I feel like in years past I've just always had new releases that I've been anticipating. I did have one book this year that I was really really anticipating the release for which was Ace of Spades which I have clearly purchased. I've actually already read it. That was like my big anticipated release of the year and uh, I don't really have any for the rest of 2021. And originally I went on to Goodreads and started searching for like new release lists, but that feels kind of disingenuous because if I don't have an answer now, I didn't want to just like create an answer for the sake of creating an answer for this question. So instead, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. Instead, I'm going to do an anticipated author or an author that I've been anticipating getting to, which I get is just like an entirely different question, but hang in there with me. I'm feeling sad, sad girl hours because I didn't have a most anticipated release to answer this, but I do have an author that I've been really meaning to get to, which is uh, Sylvia Moreno Garcia. I have been very interested in her work. I just feel like all of her books are very different and unique unto each other, and they all blend and bend genres really well. There's a little bit of horror, thriller, historical fiction, like speculative stuff going on, and that all sounds kind of right up my alley. One of my favorite things to do is to read a book from an author, love them so much, and then pick up another book from them and kind of compare and see what's going on. Next up is Biggest Disappointment of 2021 and talking actually about authors that I love so much when I read one of their books, so much so that I pick up another one of their books. That's kind of what happened with this one except the subsequent book was a disappointment. Uh, I am talking about Anxious People by Frederick Backman. This is not the worst book that I've read in 2021 by any means, but it's definitely the biggest disappointment. Uh, Bear Town was uh, my favorite book of 2020. It's one of my favorite books of all time. So I was so pumped to get to Anxious People. It was reminiscent of Bear Town in that you could definitely tell that Frederick Backman wrote it. I mean, he has a very distinct writing style, but one of my favorite things about Bear Town was the investment and the feelings that I felt for all of those characters. So I knew that this one featured a large cast of characters. So I was so ready to get invested in them and not a single one did I get invested in. Most of them I found really annoying. Most of them were almost like character-like and I just couldn't get that investment that I got from the characters in Bear Town, making it my biggest disappointment of the year. No shade to Frederick Backman. Still, still love you. Still will read more from you. Uh, that one was just my biggest disappointment. Next up, let's talk about something fun. Biggest surprise. This one was actually really easy to think of. My answer is Lovely War by Julie Berry. This is a young adult historical, World War I historical fiction romance and None of that sounds particularly appealing to me. None of that would make me want to pick it up. But the twist that Julie Berry puts on this historical romance young adult book by having these people's story be told from the perspective of Greek gods was every single thing. I was so taken aback by how much I loved this story. Each page, the writing was like an individually wrapped piece of candy. It was just a treat and a delight to read. Moving right along, we have new favorite character. And uh, this year, there could be so many, which actually made this kind of hard because there wasn't one that particularly 
stood out but I'm going to go with a character that I recently just fell in love with and that is Anne Shirley Cuthbert from Anne of Green Gable. I started watching Anne with an E earlier this year and completely fell down that rabbit hole. I loved it so much and I had actually never read the classic childhood story. So I picked it up and I had just the most fabulous time. Anne is such a vivacious young woman. I just love Anne's view of the world and reading the things that she says and how she views the world is inspirational to me. She's the perfect blend of like innocent and naive, but then she also has this maturity and uh, optimism that's rooted in reality. She is just lovely. She obviously makes this book what it is. She makes the show what it is. And uh, yeah, favorite. I feel pretty solid and confident in saying that she is my favorite character of 2021. Moving on from new favorite character, we have new favorite author, which is blank. Again, kind of for the same reason surrounding new favorite character is that there could be so many, but not one in particular stands out. But I think I'm gonna go ahead, I have like multiple right here. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pick Hafsa Faisal just because I need We Hunt the Flame to be brought up in this video at some point because of how much I fell in love with that book. Hafsa Faisal, not that I read a whole lot of YA fantasy, I actually read three YA fantasy books to try to figure out my tastes and preferences for a vlog, which I will link uh, if you're interested in watching it. Uh, this one took me by such surprise. Really, out of all of the YA fantasy that I have read, no one is doing it like Hafsa Faisal is doing it. Her characters and her world building is just a dream. Her writing is so engrossing. I just lost every single sense of reason that I had when reading this book. I guess I could also say Jackie Polzin, who is a for sure a debut author. I read Brood by her uh, earlier in this year and just anyone who is able to take a story about a woman <laughs> raising a group of chickens and just kind of knock the wind out of me because of how much I loved it. Like, I feel like she deserves a spot in this video. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to uh, purchasing her next book and experiencing more of her writing style. Next up, we have a book that made me cry. This is no secret to anyone. I cry at the majority of the books that I read. I intentionally pick books up in hopes that they'll make me not cry, but feel things. And I'm a very emotional person, so I've cried at quite a lot of books this year, but one that sticks out to me and just that it touched me so deeply in terms of emotion is The Shape of Thunder by Jasmine Warga. This is another middle grade. Middle grade is really the star of the show with this mid-year check-in. This book is what I would call very quiet. Uh, it mixes the quiet contemporary of these two girls that are no longer friends because of a very harrowing incident that broke them apart and they end up having to come back together in an attempt to locate a wormhole so you have that kind of quiet contemporary but also that like perfect kind of science-y talk blended into that and it was just extremely special and it definitely brought those slow and steady constant stream of tears throughout pretty much the whole time while I was reading it. Moving away from sad things we're going to talk about a book that made me happy and I'm not gonna lie I almost put this as the best book that I've read this year in 2021. Uh, this definitely probably more falls under that favorite book though. Not necessarily the best, but definitely my favorite, I guess. One of the favorites that I've read this year in terms of reading experience. And that is The Lightning Thief, the first in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. Yes, I had never read any of them until this year. No, I have not moved on in the series, but I am planning to. I guess I kind of went into it thinking that a book from so long ago wouldn't hold up but it deserves every single amount of hype that that book gets. It just made me overjoyed. It made me laugh out loud. Percy and Grover, some of the best dynamics that I've seen in characters and Rick Riordan clearly, I mean, very much knows what he's doing. Next is either the most beautiful book that you have purchased or has been gifted to you. And I'm switching this a little bit, but this one I am picking, it's not necessarily a beautiful book cover, but it is the cover that I think is most likely to hook me into wanting to read it based on the cover alone, uh, which is uh, Red Pill by Harry Kunzru. Uh, it's definitely not what I would call beautiful, like I said, um, but I mean, on that cover we have some portrait of 
I don't know, a white dude who was probably important at some point, but it's been kind of changed up to have those lasers coming through the eye. And then we have that cool kind of typography. Uh, and then what really is striking about this, you have this kind of, you know, striking cover, but then you open and the end pages look like this. And just the contrast is, uh, I don't know, it's every single thing. Not beautiful, but definitely one that pulled me in by cover alone. And hopefully I'll get to this at some point. Uh, I really don't know what it's about. I think it's about like the alt-right and online culture in modern day. I don't know, but the cover freaks me out but it makes me really want to read it too. Okay, and we have made it to our final check-in of this tag, which is books I need to read by the end of the year. It does say books, plural, or maybe I just wrote it down like that, but I'm going to mention multiple. Uh, I feel like I should continue in uh, at least one of the series that I've started this year because I've only completed one series this year. I'm not a series gal and I don't feel bad about it, but I have started so many series this year. I mean, Red Rising, uh, the Skyward duology, the Raven Cycle trilogy I could continue in, We Hunt the Flame. I definitely need to get to the second one and We Hunt the Flame. Uh, I could continue in Percy Jackson and the Olympians, need to get past the Lightning Thief. Uh, so any of those ones I definitely need to, should continue in at least one of them. But the one that I think I've mentioned and almost every single check-in tag that asks this, like books you need to read before the end of the year. Um, Bridge of Clay by Marcus Zusak. This at this point is my most anticipated book ever because I've had it since its release date way back in 2018. So it's been four years in the making, but I need to get over myself and I need to just read it because at this point I've hyped myself up and like psyched myself out so much that I just need to like go into it and not second guess myself and I need to get this read. I need to get it read. And that is it, everyone. We have reached the end of the mid-year check-in tag. I have been absolutely loving watching everyone's. My watch later list is pretty much only mid-year check-in tag. Like I said at the beginning, it's been an odd year of reading in terms of my emotions and just my motivation to read, but I cannot deny that I have read some fantastic and wonderful and brilliant things this year. Let me know all of the things, if you've read any of these, if you're anticipating reading any of these, if you have any recommendations based on the things that I've said. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you so much and I will see you again very, very soon. Goodbye.